Hi everybody, I'm Stefan. Welcome to the first lesson in this Journey Opus 599 tutorial course. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you like what you see give this video a thumbs up. I also offer online piano lessons if you're looking for one there's going to be information below. Opus 599 is a great technical repertoire book for beginners from the very early stages all the way up to a good intermediate level and this book is progressive so number one is the easiest and number 100 is the hardest. In this video we're going to learn how to play number one. As you could hear in the performance number one is really all about reading our first set of notes and trying to really differentiate between the half note and the whole note, so uh, minim and semi-brief, two beats and four beats, and having a very steady pulse. So the key things that we need to understand about this piece is that both hands are in a five finger position. So right hand starts on the high C, one, two, three, four, five, left hand on the middle C5 because notice the left hand is in the treble clef as well, so both hands are going to be read in the treble clef. The time signature is C, which is 4-4, four, four, so we have four beats, four quarter note beats in every single bar. The rhythm is very simple, we've got two beat notes and four beat notes, so it's going to feel very slow because the note values are so uh, long, but if you want to clap the first line of the right hand, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So two counts or two beats for the half note. I would encourage you to count loud with these first exercises to make sure that the rhythm is very tight all the way through and your pulse is steady. So once we understand the rhythm, then we can have a look at the melody. Both hands are kind of moving around, but when one hand is holding, the other hand is moving, so a little bit of coordination. Both hands stay in the five finger position. The right hand is mostly moving in steps, so stepwise motion, and the left hand is mostly moving in skips, so different kind of motion between the two. And they go up and down, up and down, and the first line is repeated, there's a repeat sign, and then the second line is repeated, so we play the first line twice, then the second line twice. Now let's play the right hand, the first line. We start on the C, one, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. Now this journey book is full of finger numbers in the first 10 exercises. Try to ignore looking at the finger numbers, check the first one in each line, and then look instead at the intervals, the steps and skips, to encourage uh, sight reading and reading the actual notes instead of finger numbers. Don't rely on finger numbers. Now what can happen when you play such a simple melody is that the fingers kind of go flat, especially if you're a very, very early beginner. So what we want to do is have our fingers nicely curved, the wrist above the keys relaxed and flat, and keeping the fingers nicely close together. So almost like in a cup shape, not spread out like that, and definitely not playing with flat fingers. So playing those notes with the fingertip to get a very crisp key attack. Now the book doesn't specify if you should play this legato or if you should play it detached. I played it legato because it's, it's harder than playing it detached, but by all means you can first play it detached and then go into full finger legato. When we play finger legato we really want to connect through the notes, so not letting the D up until the E goes down but then quickly making sure there is no gap between the two notes and the overlap is minimal so we don't hear anything like this. We don't want that, so as soon as the next note goes down the previous one comes up and that way we get a beautiful continuous legato in that melody. The left hand first line starts on the middle C and here we again the same hand shape applies but we are going to move in skips. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Let's add the two together. So the key thing here is to sustain both hands all the way through and really make sure we the two notes go down perfectly together. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now they move together. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Second line, let's go straight hands together. Left hand starts on the G number one, right hand two on the D. One, two, three, four. 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 Now notice what can happen when we play the two G's after each other in the first two bars. One, two, three, four. When the left hand comes up to re-strike the note, the right hand can come up with it. Make sure the right hand stays connected. So holding down that note when the left hand comes up. And if you get all the notes right and all the rhythms right, and the shape is right and the legato is beautiful and you, you find that little piece of melody in this short exercise, then you can add a little bit of dynamics as the melody is coming down, descending, we would get quieter and as it goes up, ascends, we can get a little bit louder. Also, when you have repeated sections, like the same pattern repeated twice, first time you could play it loud, second time quiet. There is no dynamic direction in the piece, but we can always add a little bit to make it sound a bit more musical. So for example, the end of the first line, I could go and getting I will do a diminuendo because I'm approaching the end of my phrase and the melody is descending. And then the second line, I could start loud and so on. So this was my advice for this very simple exercise number one. Now, a couple of important things about this book. First of all, it's not a method book as we would think about method books nowadays. This is definitely not something that you would play on your very first lesson, but you could play it in the beginning section of your piano journey in the first couple of months once you are familiar with steps and skips and you learned a few notes. It's good because it stays away from middle C position, so not both thumbs are on the middle C, but we're still kind of in a C position. The second thing you need to understand about the book is that this book is all about technique. Speed is always, always secondary. There's no speed indication to any of these pieces in the beginning of the book, and you can go as slow as you want, and if you feel comfortable and you achieved all your goals, correct notes, correct rhythms, and correct articulation, you can start increasing your speed. But don't go fast at the expense of an uneven rhythm or bad articulation. Speed is the least of your worries. Get all the technical parts correct and done and dusted first, and then you can think about speed. Even if you play them slowly, you will still learn an awful lot from these pieces. See you soon!